Good. Hey guys, Landon here with TBS Factory coming to you live on site, downtown Oklahoma City at one of the most popular truck stops here in Oklahoma City, just off of I-40, outside this window here. I'm excited to be next to a good friend that I've been able to talk to for the last hour or so. Norm, Norm, say hi. Hi. So Norm, um, you and I met in the driver's lounge. That's right. You were getting a massage. Yes. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> uh, I would be getting a massage. Uh, back in our office, we have some massage chairs. Can't go wrong with those. But uh, the heart behind this TBS Live here is we want to be on site, right in the heart of what's going on in the industry and one of the most popular topics, and that's the ELD. So if you're a company driver, an owner operator, uh, if you're a small fleet owner, you want to pay attention to this because Norm's got some awesome insight. Um, and, and you're going to find out why in just a second. Norm, how long have you been in the trucking industry? 30 years. Just 30 years. Just 30 years. If I don't, clock, if I don't count the military, 33 years with the military. So you were telling me about 4 million miles almost. Just about. That's amazing. Uh, with a great you know, driver record, safe on the road, that kind of thing. It's yes. a big deal. Congratulations, first and foremost. Hey, if you can Thank do you. me a favor, tell us where you're watching this from. You know, are you in Oklahoma City? You're down in Dallas? Are you over in New York? Are you off in California? Where are you watching this from? Let us know. And also, why don't you tell Norm congratulations on 4 million miles nearly of safe travel hauling a big rig. So big congrats on that because that's a big deal. Thank you. That's a big deal. So uh, help us say thank you to, and big congrats to Norm. Um, Norm, real quick, let our audience know, how did you get into trucking? Well, years ago, I graduated from high school and didn't know what I wanted to do, so I went into the military. I told them I wanted to be a light vehicle mechanic, uh, wanted to go to Germany. Yeah. And they told me, if you want to go to Germany, you're going to be a truck driver. Nice. So I caught the bug. Uh, got that number two diesel fuel in my blood. And um, after the military, I had a couple years working in a warehouse, saw that truck backing up to the dock. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. So, so not only 30 years in trucking, but also military vet. I am a military vet, also a Desert Storm vet. Thank you for your service. Yes, you're welcome. And to all the veterans honor. watching, thank you. Uh, we, we're very grateful for your service. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, this is by accident. We just met in the driver's lounge, and, um, and so above all, just it's an honor to meet you. Thank you for your time. Um, my honor. What, you, without a doubt, you never know what coffee will do. <laughs> that's right. Coffee's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, Norm, you, know, we, you and I have been spending the last hour or so talking about ELDs. It's a big topic. It um, is. And you were sharing some really just down-to-earth, real stories of how ELDs have impacted you yes. while you're on the road. Um, you were mentioning that you had to cut a drive short, a route short, because of ELDs. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. I, I had picked up a load, and I was head, headed to um, Texas, Amarillo, Texas. And I was looking at my hours. I had about two hours left, and I had about 124 miles okay. to go. Which, you know, on a good day, if you didn't have any stoplights, any issues, you could probably make that. Sure. But because of ELD, because of hours of service, I cut it short about two hours. Found a little truck stop, mm -hmm. took my break, and left out the next morning after I did my 10-hour break and uh, you know made it in safe and legal. Safe and legal. It's, it's kind of the heart behind ELDs. It is. But in all honesty, that cut the pay that day. It did. It did. And that's just kind of the beast behind this whole situation. Right. It's about a $60 loss for that two hours. I, $60 loss? Yes. I don't know about you, but I don't want to give anybody just 60 bucks when I should have got that 60 bucks. Right. Um, and, and, but the good thing, safe and legal. Safe and legal. Bad yes. thing. Not, a, not the amount of money that you projected. Exactly. Um, and sorry for the background noise. We really are live on site here. So if you, that's why we got these microphones. Hopefully you can hear us good. Um, I'll move it up just a little bit here. Nikki, our awesome producer behind the screen here, is telling me to make sure this is high enough. So hopefully you can hear us. And if not, uh, just be patient with us. But, you know, Norm, you, you're on the road a lot. I mean, you're out on the road for about three weeks every yes. month. Yes. Right? And then home for about five days or so? About five days off. 
so you're dealing with this topic. This is a, you're not a dedicated lane kind of guy. You're, no, you're OTR. OTR national, yes. That's a that's a big deal, and and we were, and I'd love to get your opinion on this because you've been in the, the business for about thirty years. Yes. Uh, you've seen trucking for what it was thirty years ago to now. Yes. Um, and you said something that really caught my attention that because of ELDs, you feel like the the common courtesy in trucking is, is going a different direction to where if somebody's pulled on the side of the road back when you first started, you would pull over or somebody pull over and help you out. Sure. But now that time is not on your side. Exactly. Hours of service are not on your side. You're just moving on. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's it, it seems like today is a me first attitude because of I'm thinking the hours of service rules and the ELDs. Yeah, and it's just your opinion. That yeah, it's just my experience. opinion. But you go to Fuel Island, if you take more than a couple of minutes to fuel your truck, you have somebody behind you that's a little irritated, Yeah, we'll say. Um, but years ago, uh, I've seen times where I was pulled over because a truck failed or an issue right. with a truck. And I had truck drivers pull behind me and uh, mm-hmm. check to see if I was okay. Yeah. And today it's get out of my way, me first. It seems yeah. like a 180 degree turnaround. <clears throat> I've got to ask when it comes to everybody watching, can you relate to that? Um, share your story in the comments here. We want all the, I mean the heart behind this entire live here on site at this truck stop in Oklahoma City with Norm. It's just to start the conversation about the impact that ELDs have had in December. We've got the April 1st next deadline coming up. That's going to be a big deal when it comes to fines and um, CDL tickets, that kind of stuff. Um, With the people that you've been talking to, owner operators, other drivers on the road, especially since you're out on the road every for three weeks every month, what's the conversation you're hearing from their perspective? Um, Are 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 you seeing more? good conversations with ELDs, or are you seeing more frustration with ELDs? A lot more frustration. Um, everything that they have to do is time <laughs> sensitive. Um, when you have issues trying to get unloaded at a customer and yeah. they don't unload on time, or there's an accident yeah. on the road and it holds you up and you can't make your appointment because of that, mm-hmm. uh, construction's coming up pretty soon, that's a big issue. Yeah. Uh, Washington, D.C., that's a two-hour delay j- on any day at rush hour. That's a delay anybody mentally. That's just my opinion. Nobody else. Um, and, but you're absolutely correct. I mean, so it, with the ELDs, you were talking about the relationship between you and dispatch, you and the company. Thankfully, you and, that's been a good relationship. They, um, On the plus side of ELDs, technically there's no fudging anymore. No. And uh, you were saying that you're not forced to do anything maybe exactly. that you were in the past. Right. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, a few years ago, not with my company that I'm with now, but a previous company, a lot of times you would get done, your work, your hours were up, mm-hmm. but guess what? Just give you another logbook and you have plenty of hours. No way. You can't do that today. All right. Um, with this company that I'm with, it's safe and legal. Yeah. A hundred percent. There, there is no issue. And the biggest thing with this company is make sure that they know what the issue is. Right. If there's a problem, call. Let yeah. them. Let them know. No, well, absolutely. And, and it, moving on with that, parking. It's always been a hot topic. You dealt with it. Yes. You deal with it every week. Yes. Um, what's the ELD mandate had? Uh, an impact on you when it comes to parking. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you have to plan ahead with your e-logs. Um, if you're on the East Coast, you know it's going to be limited parking. Mm-hmm. There are very little parking on the East Coast. Right. And it's a big issue. And a lot of times you have to cut short couple hours in your day just to make sure you're going to have parking. Right. And you're going to lose money doing that. But if you try to push it and there's no parking and you run out of hours, that's the issue. You know, and Norm, you've been talking a lot about uh, the e-logs. And if you can relate to this, I mean, when it comes to parking, when it comes to working with your company, 
maybe you're an owner operator, small fleet owner. How are you dealing with this uh, when it comes to being safe and legal? I think it's a great phrase. I mean, mm-hmm. how are you dealing with being safe and legal? Because it's the heart behind ELDs, at least that's what they say from the top down. And you hear a, a lot of conversation about no more big brother looking over me. Right. Uh, do you think e-logs, I mean, just your, uh, your professional opinion, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's a big brother issue? Like, you know, the government, DOT, FMCSA is just trying to dive deeper into owning what you do every day, or is it really a safe and legal situation? It's probably a little bit of both, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are you hearing from the conversations you're having in other driver lounges? Well, a lot of guys are saying that they're losing money. They're not making the money they used to buy because of the hours of uh, service rules. Mm-hmm. And then the ELDs are just pushing the issue that you're not going to fudge anymore. You're going to do it by the book. That's a frustration, I mean, especially when it comes to there's enough freight, not enough drivers, depending on who you talk to, what report you read. Um, and so if, if you're not making the money you once did each day, that's a, it's frustrating. So we've got to talk about that and get some better solutions, maybe. Yes. One thing, um, I think a lot of companies, if they'd pay their drivers more money, they'd have quite a few more drivers. Who wants to go out? and follow all these rules for what a lot of these companies are paying. 30 some cents a mile, it's ridiculous. No, you wouldn't be in the trucking for 30 years if you weren't making a good living. Right, exactly. And so thankfully with the company you're at, you're, you're doing good. Right. right. You're talking about that, which is awesome. Um, but thankfully, you're doing good, at the same time they want safe and legal. Yes. And you're working together. Yes. And I think that's a good commonality that we can take from this conversation is that with ELDs, it is what it is. Right. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't believe it's going anywhere. Yeah. From what you're saying and what you're hearing in uh, your conversations. And, and so if that's the case, let's make good money and be safe and legal. Exactly. And I, I think there's a lot of room for that. And, and com- more conversations like that need to be happening. Right. Um, last thing I would say, and we've got to wrap it up here. Are you hearing any part of the country that's enforcing ELDs more than others? Or is it, is it too early to tell, in your opinion? I think it's a little early to tell. Um, okay. Where I've been stopped, Utah and New York State last year, um, pretty much you, you better be by the rule mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you're going to be in trouble. Right. Simple as that. Got it. Got it. Well, Norm, I can't thank you enough for your time here. It's been an honor to meet My you. My pleasure. Thank you for your time in trucking. Thank you for your service with our great country. Uh, thank you for the time here. Um, and then whatever we can do for you, you let us know. And, and please, with those that are watching, one, again, remind Norm how much you appreciate his service and his time on the road. And also be a part of this conversation. Let us know what you're experiencing when it comes to ELDs. April 1st is down the road. It's been a few months since December with the ELD mandate. Get this conversation going. Tag some friends. Share this video. We want to make sure that we just have a very good professional, professional, keep it clean, Uh, conversation about ELDs because it's only going to get more serious as we go on month to month. Would you agree with that? I agree. Awesome. On behalf of all of us here at TBS, thank you for joining us live on location downtown Oklahoma City at one of the most popular truck stops in America, right here in Central America. We'll see you guys soon next week on Thursday when we come to our next TBS Live. Thanks for joining us.